Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast. Happy Wednesday. It is hump day. Do not forget to hump someone you love because that's what we do here at the morning toast. And speaking of girlies, I wouldn't mind dry humping. Okay, that, I took it a little too far. Sorry. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm darn good. I'm feeling conflicted. First, you make fun of my lingering S in millennials. Me and Jackie were talking about this yesterday. Like when we say good morning millennials, Jackie always holds out the S. And when we're editing the episode, it actually makes it really difficult to um, like line up our vocals. So if you could just like cut the S. I'll think about it. I just want to hold on to that moment. I love the moment. Of course. I love wishing all of the millennials and Gen Z and boomers uh good morning i think it's such an important way that we start our day and maybe that's not something that we agree on (laughs) but now you want to dry hump me which is not what i want not what i want for us either sisters not sisters that's not sisterly things no but like sisterly things like you make fun of your sister and then like you love her oh for sure and then you tell her to get on the leap of faith Oh my god, I'm so hating that we brought that up. I'm loving it. I got reach I got outreach from both the sisters saying that they're so glad that I told the story. Wait, speaking of stories, I remembered something last night that needs to be added to my list of stories that I am constantly saying. Okay. So yesterday Making we the added, list, checking it twice. Yesterday we added Trevor Noah's big ass, right? Oh yeah, not officially though. Trev oh no, that's your regrets. Trevor Noah's big ass. Okay. Okay. And here's another one. You're gonna like. You're gonna really feel it. This is like a quintessential like me story. Like, can what we cannot talk about Serena Williams because of the paper that you wrote. Unless I'm gonna talk about the paper that I wrote that I actually yeah. got an A on. Uh, yeah. No. College. If we're gonna t- if I'm gonna choose a story about Serena Williams, we need to carve out like five minutes for Claudia <laughs> to tell her story. <laughs> You don't understand what a big deal it was. Like, it was the final (laughs) essay for this class. Like, I couldn't graduate without it. It wasn't like a dissertation, but it was like a 20-page paper. And I forget what the the class was called. It was like race and ethics or something. And I chose Serena Williams. Whatever. It was like, it was a daring choice because it was contemporary, you know? And I think most of my peers were, were diving deep into history. And I decided to tell a contemporary story. It was a risk. But it you're off. nothing if not a risk taker and an academic yeah so the list of stories is getting really long we are actually recording a hysterical patreon episode today our fifth episode of the month where claudia is going to tell each story again in depth i personally well one it's for everyone who hasn't been around since the beginning of each story and maybe forgot bits and pieces so each story she's gonna have the floor to tell her tale I personally am hoping that it's going to be closure and that, you know, once you get to say them no. in long form, that like we never have to hear some of them again. I mean, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity to um, to be given that opportunity to just kind of speak without judgment, you know, about my favorite stories. Yeah, no, I, w- I wonder how that feels. I wouldn't know either. No, to I speak think without would. judgment about my favorite things. I think you would know. No, I don't think that I would. Well, I think that's kind of the life we chose as podcasters, like to speak with judgment, you know? So true. So I'm just going to put the call out. I have a huge list of stories that are Claudia's faves, but if anything comes to mind for you, and we also can check the Instagram post of Claudia's favorite stories, or even something that you just like want clarity on that we always reference, probably number one is Dennis's funeral, Mm -hmm. then... Drop it in the comments. We'll include it in the episode. I'm really so excited. I'm excited too. um, Because, you know, these are my favorite stories for a reason. Yeah. All of them have like a very significant moral of the story. Oh, Hillary Duff at the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, that one's famous. I feel like everyone knows the the time she attacked me. But um, it can't hurt to say it again. And by the way, that Bahamian trip was when you did the leap of faith. (gasps) oh <gasps> yes oh my god so I saw Hillary Duff in Atlantis and that was the time I went back with my friends from high school for spring break and we saw Hillary Duff and I did that stupid water slide so it's really it's full circle so what you're saying is you took two leaps of faith on that trip and both of them were not worth it both of them were a flop both of them were a big floppio damn I'm yeah. sorry it is what it is, Jax. It is what sometimes it is. you take a leap of faith and you only hear about the good leaps that people take but there's a lot 
where you don't land on anything. Well, that's like the whole Cushy. concept, even though like I don't subscribe to the narrative of like needing to go to college to um, be successful. But like that's the world we live in where like people are always saying like Bill Gates dropped out of college. Like while that might be true, so did a lot of other people who didn't become Bill Gates, you know? Right, right. So I guess the message of today's episode is stay in school, even though school is for suckers. Oh my God, I was just seeing this I would TikTok. say stay in... Um Stay in school up up through high school. I think college is very optional. I hope so. Um, also, I just saw this TikTok that was so funny because I have a whole bit in my show about like things that teachers used to say that's like so fucking annoying and makes no sense. <laughs> and somebody was like sharing a video about like the most annoying things teachers used to say. And it was, hope you all enjoyed your break. I was grading your papers during the break. And it's like, well, one, it's literally your job. Two, uh, you gave us a paper due, right? You create the curriculum. Like yeah. you literally scheduled this knowing that you would have to spend your break grading papers. And it's like, great, we, don't, we literally don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't ask you right and it's like how long did grading papers take like if it was a break like maybe you should just work more efficiently and it and wouldn't the, take up your whole break no and the comments were like oh great you graded it well can you update like our grade book so I can show my mom I'm not failing anymore like come on get it together no like and can we have our papers back because like right. they love to sit on them I don't think there was a moment like more horrible in our schooling than like the process of handing back papers and tests like when you would like he would walk around the room or she and like dole out everyone's materials and then like he would fold your corner down if you did really poorly you know mm. yeah I don't remember that moment oh it's not seared like no I just yeah I don't remember the process of them going around and giving the test back also do you remember like having when you were much younger having to get your um graded test time signed, of course signed by a parent of course but like that how was does, abuse but how does the teacher know what your parents' signature looks like? Oh, for sure. I think, and kids really do know what their parents' signature looks like. So yeah, but they can't even they can't copy it well. But it doesn't matter. They could literally put a scribble and be like, "Yeah, that's my parents' signature." Like, do they have signature checks at the school? No, I feel like they did. Like that's what it felt like as a kid. I, like, it, I feel like they did too. But that's really extreme. Like, no wonder you spent your whole break like going over signatures. <laughs> Yeah, no wonder why it took you so long to grade the test. You were like doing forgery at, like checks. I feel like the signature, getting your parent to sign your test, isn't necessarily about making sure the parent sees your bad grade. It's a, also about like letting the kid know that you fucked up big, like so big that your parent has to sign the test. And like maybe no, but that everyone would be had enough. to sign it. Not just maybe the bad. that would be enough for the kid to like work harder. And if the grades keep going down, like then they call the parent because like they could just call the parent and be like, "Your kid's stinking up the joint." But I feel like a part of it is like that kid. Accountability. accountability and realizing that they are in a really bad spot yes it's definitely the accountability but didn't everyone have to get their test signed not if even if you did poorly do you really have to get an 100 signed i wouldn't know <laughs> that Trill was just like a fucked same. up part of trills bro yeah bro that was just like a really yeah, fucked just up like part really of cool schooling. and hip what you're extremely say? cool and hip i would agree yeah no honestly no that wasn't sarcasm coming from me or you me neither <laughs> Like you're extremely cool and hip, period. Yeah, because my really cool sister keeps me up to speed on everything that's, so that's nice. cool. That's so nice of you to say. And she's really sweet. Her name is Margo. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She doesn't tell me anything. She doesn't talk to you. Okay, I spoke to her last night. Yeah, well, how it big was day, really big cool. day. What? Big day. It was a big day. It was a really, really cool moment. We had a nice combo. I'm so happy for you. And you got a whole weekend with her. What was she like? It was fabulous. It was fabulous. You know, we're only a few years apart, but like there really are some serious generational differences between Snatchler and I. One of them being the amount that we're on our phone. Cause I'm on my phone so much. Like Margo cannot unplug. Like we're all watching TV or just like, she's always on her phone. Wow, she can't unplug. Refusing to connect with me. Like it's so annoying. That's really annoying. That's definitely a pet peeve of mine. And I like, I hate when people are like, get off your phone, like fuck off. Like, cause I'm always on my phone. So for me to notice it and like be annoyed by it, it, it was really, really bad. bad. Like mid conversation, we were playing like this really fun card game. Have you ever played Cheers, Govna? No. Oh my God, it's so dumb. It's like, okay. So you, everyone in the group has to go around and count one, two, three, four, five, six, up until 21. But you have to remember when you're counting that numbers 14 and seven are swapped. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, 14. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 7. 
And then when you get to 21, the person who 21 lands on has to um, make up a rule. So it's like, instead of saying one, what we did is like, <laughs> instead of saying 11, name any real housewife of all time. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, 14, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, seven. You fucked up. Oh shit, Taylor Armstrong, seven. And then you keep going until you get all the numbers. And Taylor it gets, Armstrong, 12, 13, seven. Exactly, exactly. So um, I forgot where I was going with the story. Oh, counselor on her phone. So we were playing and it's like really intense and like you really need to focus because if you don't remember, everyone has to start over. Like it's so annoying. And counselor's just like glued to her phone. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to? I'm literally right here. Right. Who is she maybe talking I'm just, to? Maybe I'm just not that interesting, but I doubt that's it. No, I don't, I don't think that's it. Me? Uninteresting? No. But who is she talking to all day? I think she's just like, you know, an influencer. So there's like lots of content she needs to consume, engagement. I think she's preoccupied. But I also think it's a generational thing. Like they're not even always doing something, you know? Yeah, they're not always doing something. Most of us aren't doing something on our phones. What's going to be your rule when it comes to cell phones? Because the concept of like raising kids like now is so freaky to me like the the cell phones social media like what is your policy like we got flip phones what in like the fourth or fifth grade but yeah was, I feel like because really of 9-11 I'm gonna want to do something similar to like what we had we got flip phones in I think I got mine in the fifth grade and so I'll want to get him a phone whenever I do get him a phone like it's not going to be an iPhone it's going to be a phone that like makes calls and sends texts like, hey for if a anybody while. needs to make a call I've got a phone literally that I phone. think that they have like phones for kids like that oh they should and then there'll be like iPad time where he can go on YouTube and stuff and oh, like, like do that. stuff that he wants to do are you going to monitor try it and, like mirror it as much to what we experience as possible even though there is more technology now than what we had are you going to monitor it like like what he's doing or is that like an invasion of privacy on the iPad? I'm not going to monitor it, but I'm sh I'll definitely like go in and, and see like what the searches have been just to like see what he's into. If I ever want to buy him a gift, like I want to know what TikToker he likes, you know? Do you think that children are entitled to privacy? This is like a big debate on TikTok, like a lot of parents. Um it it depends. Like in certain aspects, yes, in other aspects, no. Like if mm -hmm. a kid is writing in a diary, I wouldn't read it. Unless not. I was like really concerned about what's mm -hmm. going on with them and I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's case by case. It's, it's as you like to say, it's nuanced. No, I never say that. I say it's layered. It's layered. So yeah, no, it's, it just depends on what's going on with the kid. Why? What do people on TikTok say? No, people are just going back and forth on like parenting techniques. Like I actually, Mime Bialik is going viral on TikTok. I don't know if you know this right now. It's so Sh mime. Uh, queen and it was actually like a really interesting conversation oh like people, i'm sorry my Bialik lifetime movie half day. yes <laughs> to the list. that's a, one of my favorite stories i was literally just about to bring it up but i want to finish my <laughs> point <laughs> my. like i just don't understand why she was in a christmas movie you know okay you'll let us know later yeah i will so um she has a podcast and a clip from her podcast is going viral because she was talking about this parenting technique when like a kid falls and you say like, you're okay, you're okay, don't worry, you're okay. You're in a sense like invalidating this child's feelings because like the child is to, if you asked, you know, Harry, he's not okay. But you're like invalidating his feelings being like, you're fine. Yeah. And like, while I did kind of understand that, I also thought about how like when I would like bitch and moan, like I was told I'm fine, like I was fucking fine and I appreciated the realness, you know? Yeah, no, sometimes you need someone to tell you like it's nothing. I feel like that's what we had growing up. Like anytime something happened to be like, it's nothing. And it's part of like the freak out is like, is something happened and like I'm scared right. almost. But if someone's there to tell you like, it's fine, you are fine, you are okay. It's like, it's calming. So sure, yeah, if your kid's arm is broken and dangling and you're saying it's fine, <laughs> like it's not fine. But if they trip and fall and like they are okay, I think it's good to let them know that they're okay. Cause like, it's a shock. Of course. So then another, like a school of thinking came out that I actually thought was a good remedy was like, when you say to the kid, like, are you, are you are you hurt or are you just upset? Like, identify the feeling. Then I think we're just getting like a little too much into the feelings of a toddler. We're getting so into the weeds. Like, <laughs> and by the way, to a toddler, like hurt and upset are the same thing. They don't know the no. different nuances between the two words. Totally. And, and also what parent, what, is parent? Like, what parent is not busy enough to be like, are you hurt or are you upset? What parent, when their kid say, let's say you like fall and scrape your knee, in that moment, like you're, as a parent too, you're like, whoo. 
And right. who's taking the minute to be like, heart? I'm sad. <laughs> no, by the way, <laughs> the the line you just said about like them not knowing the difference is literally so true. So true. Like, your kids will be fine. Go Trust your gut. If it's nothing, let them know it's nothing. And if it's something, like, let them know. But... I, I don't think it's like, so you're not validating their feelings. I but I think, think also, I think that's a major problem. I think that too many people's feelings have been validated over the years. And then when they're confronted with something that they don't like, they're like, wait, wait why aren't you validating my feelings? And yeah. maybe, maybe it's because your feelings aren't valid. Oh, pew, 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 Kobe. One of my Kobe. favorite things to do is Kobe. Like, Kobe. I can't watch anyone, namely Ben, play basketball without being like, Kobe. Kobe. No, same. You want to know something really sweet? Yeah. I was DMing you every time you were showing Ben <laughs> shooting hoops and I was saying Kobe. And do you know that the iPhone autocorrects Kobe to love? Why is that cute? It's just like sweet because it's no, Kobe. No, it's not. No, no. Because like where the letters are, they probably think like K-O-B-E and L-O-V-E are right, right next uh, to each right. other. No, no, I don't think that Apple did it like as an homage to Kobe. It's like a fun, it's a, it's a coincidence that's really sweet. If anything, it's disrespectful, like them not recognizing Kobe. But when they do recognize him, they recognize him as love. <laughs> but they're like, they're not. I just thought it, it's not like it's correcting Kobe to duck. Like, <laughs> like, I guess. Like, it's just a nice word. Okay, never mind. No, no, I, okay, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were like, how cute that they did that. No, no, no. They, not that they okay. did that, but like that that's what it autocorrects to. Like, it's just like a cute coincidence. Yeah. I just cool. thought something funny, but it's like, um, it's an offline story. Uh, we need to start a new podcast called The Offline Stories because there's so much I want to say. Like yesterday, I found out the craziest, most hottest, and it's so annoying because I'm not going to say it, but I found out the most insane thing about an influencer like you'll never hear a story so crazy in your life do you agree because I told you it yeah it's really crazy and I need an offline podcast where I could say it like and not we're, in we're the all way sworn to secrecy N yeah you are sworn to secrecy I mean like maybe in a few months it'll end up on the Patreon and I think that that's fair same it, I hate to With talk no about something. names no names well it'll be fairly obvious I, I can't talk about it like for real okay but like part of me, oh my God. But you brought it up and you keep bringing it up. Yeah, no. Because often when you find a really good piece of gossip, you don't want to not share it. Not because of the person who the gossip is about, but because of the person who told you. You have to protect the messenger. That's really where it gets really complicated with gossip. And I actually was thinking yesterday when it comes to gossip, um, people who are like above gossip and like all that, what do you talk about? You Well, you know what they say. That it's like, um, sm uh, what's the word? Big people discuss ideas. Small people discuss people. Yeah, something like that. Let me find the, the exact quote. That's like a really obnoxious thing because, like, <laughs> I, I think that like gossip is really an exchange of information and it makes the world go round and like i i genuinely don't understand when people like who vow not to gossip or like speak ill of other people like what do you do all day you talk about ideas okay i have an idea to that... gossip yeah let's gossip okay here are some quotes great minds discuss ideas yeah this is it average minds discuss events small minds discuss people yikes I actually like just think that proverb is bullshit. I just want to say, I feel like we discuss a good mix of ideas, events, and people. And so we're just like, we, what does that say about our minds? No, and if you could boil anything down, like, okay, essentially people talking about like politics are really gossiping because like it's about people. Like they're gossiping about senators and stuff. Like it's gossip. Yeah, well, it depends what kind of politics. Like, but are you talking about political theory? Are you talking about ideas for how to make the world a better place? Not like who should be in this person's not doing that, but like big ideas. I just think at the end of the day, gossip has gotten a bad rap and it's really an exchange of information. Yeah, I don't think an exchanging information is gossip. I think putting your spin on it oh i don't do that. gossip i don't do that mm. yeah no if you're really getting all the facts right but the problem is that the story that you heard how do you know that that's all the facts and in the way that it happened so it right. inevitably already has spin telephone and then you 
inevitably put your spin on it because like that's how people repeat stuff and memories as stated are not perfect and the game keeps going yeah well one thing about me is i am gonna gossip and that's just a little little fact about me okay can't wait to hear more hot goss that's what we do here you know what we do we do the fast five stories and i think except for yesterday Except for yesterday. Oh my God, you guys, deep apologies. Except not really, because you did not need to know the fifth story. And so I think my subconscious was like, forget it. Because also, I'll explain when we talk about the first story, why you didn't need to know it. So without further ado, do, 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 where are Strice brethren? Nowhere to be found. I miss them dearly, but I'm going to like, they don't want to be here. So what are you going to do about it? It is time for the fast five stories that you need to know. Boop. And today's episode is sponsored by IHG Hotels and Resorts, the hotel company made up of over 6,000 hotels and 17 amazing brands. They are taking care of their guests this holiday season with exclusive benefits like member discounts, a bonus points offer when downloading the new IHG One Rewards mobile app, catalog savings, travel gear, and more. So IHG is made up of really fabulous um, brands like Kimpton Hotels and Restaurants, Intercontinental Hotels and Resorts, Holiday Inn Express. They have over 6,000 hotels and their all new loyalty program, which is called IHG One rewards makes it that much easier to check out and redeem these can't miss offers right in the palm of your hand with the new IHG one rewards app you can also download the app um, if you haven't yet you'll start earning points with ease and redeem them for the things that you want most you have to be a member so don't wait to sign up I over the last few years have really gotten like my membership loyalty game on fleek and I'm so excited about the new IHG one rewards app I am of course already a member um because they have such fabulous brands all over the world. So whether you're planning to travel for holiday or whatever your vibe is for me, like I'm very like beach luxury, but everyone has their own thing. Personally, I'm going to drink a margarita on the beach. Um, and IHG Hotels and Resorts makes that possible. But whatever your vibe is, IHG has got you covered. For more details on how to maximize your travels this holiday season with IHG Hotels and Resorts, their cyber offerings, if you guys want to follow them, you can do it at IHG One Rewards on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or visit IHG.com slash cyber sale. Again, you must be a member, so don't wait to sign up you can download the app or just go to ihg.com slash cyber sale for all the details on their new loyalty program which is truly fabulous yes thank you so much you're welcome okay our first story today is the day spotify wrapped not only did everyone get their year in review from spotify but spotify also is sharing its most streamed artists artists of the year and songs of the year and podcasts And podcast, yes. Our top five artists of the year from Spotify. Number one, I'm not going to make you guess. Number one, Bad Bunny. Number two, Taylor Swift. Queen. Number three, The Weeknd. Sorry, number three, Drake. Number four, The Weeknd. Number five, BTS. Well, Bad Bunny and BTS makes a lot of sense because they're like really global artists. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess at this point, Taylor Swift is too. And... When did she release Red TV? Was that this year too? No. So it's kind of crazy because her album came out a month ago. Yeah. That's really impressive. It is impressive. Also, the most streamed songs of 2022. Number one song of the year, Harry Styles, As It Was. Wow. Number two is Heat Waves by Glass Animals. And number three, this is crazy, for the second year running, it's Stay with Justin Bieber and the Kid Leroy. Second and that was year? Apple's number one song of the year. And it's not even from this year. Damn, that's really impressive. Yeah, that's big numbers. So last yesterday's fifth story was going to be Apple's year end Who cares? data, which I knew I didn't realize Spotify rap was coming today, but I knew it was coming soon. So we were going to have a conversation about the year in music. And I only need to have that conversation once, really. Spotify. And Spotify is the go to for music. So that's so that it's on just- that. It's that time of year where it's like horrendous to be an Apple Music user and Apple Podcast user. Mm Because, I mean, we've been tagged this morning already in like 500 people, you know, of their top podcasts and stuff like that. So um, something that I found really interesting is that, you know, when we first started podcasting, so everyone gets Spotify wrapped, but podcasters get their own Spotify wrapped data on their listeners, where they're from, categories, genres, things like that. I mean, I imagine each artist who's ever uploaded to Spotify gets their wrapped. Yes, but people don't, I don't think realize podcasters get it too. Yeah, we get it too. So um, when we first started podcasting, we had actually met with Spotify and they were just like helping us. They were really trying to build up their podcasting platform. We had 4% of our listeners listening on Spotify as of this morning half of our listeners listen on Spotify like half of our listeners have migrated probably from Apple 
to Spotify. Yeah. And I just think that's crazy. It's crazy. It means that the work and the money that they're putting into building out Spotify podcasts is working. Because so we're not true. doing anything different. It's not, a, right. it's really not a reflection on us or our listeners changing it's just them becoming a bigger name in podcasting actually though it's a little bit us because when we promote on social media I now will link out like when you do like a, a link sticker I will link out to Spotify because the way our podcast immediately goes to Spotify and like takes like 30 minutes to get on Apple is so annoying so because Spotify is just like doing more they make it easier for us to promote it that's so true yeah I feel like people don't realize that that sometimes our podcast is not on Apple we only upload it once and it goes to all of the different places at the exact same time and Spotify is there instantaneously and Apple is delayed all the time and for everyone I always see people who have podcasts being like it's not on Apple yet don't know what to tell you so Spotify is really just making it super easy to listen it's so annoying the way Apple like doesn't I feel like Spotify like came from the back and Apple like never even tried to compete. They just like sit there. Yeah, they're resting on their laurels. Yeah, but I guess it's because as Apple, like they make money off of every app in the app store. Cause like if you spend money on an app, like they take like 30%. That's true. But if you are listening to podcasts through their podcasting app, that's like invaluable data. Of course. And I think that they sh would probably want that data more, but I feel like they, they're not taking other competitors seriously and it shows like I was just on the podcast app I was looking for the charts we're like charting in a major way these days like on Apple yeah like in the yeah. comedy section like we used to be like well it's funny we were, we were like 12 and then we were eight like eight. over time like steady and now we're like holding firm at five yeah we're five and six usually us Heather McDonald the office girlies morbid which I still don't understand is what a comedy podcast when it's and the about yellow death. um Smart Those three guys, smartless with the yellow. I, you know, I always like to predict who Spotify is going to snatch up next. And they just snatched up Anything Goes with Emma Chamberlain. Right, we never even spoke about that. But I would have thought they would have snatched up smartless. It's Jason yeah. Bateman, Will Arnett, and the guy from um, Will and Grace. I'm sorry, don't come for me. Sean Evans, I think his name is. I don't watch Will and Grace. Um, but they're literally always number one. Yeah. It reminds me so much of like armchair expert. Like I, it's the like same it's, vibe. I it's the same agree. vibe. It's probably a similar audience. I feel like Spotify needs to like take some of the news ones that are um, tops and uh, kind of like m something outside of comedy. I feel like they yeah. really even Emma Chamberlain is technically in the comedy category, right? Is she? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, what's interesting is they also released their top podcast of the year joe rogan is number one obviously call her daddy was number two and emma chamberlain is number three even though her show wasn't exclusive to spotify and isn't even yet so like she and i'm sure that's how they made the decision to to go with her acquire her right because joe rogan and call her daddy being the top podcast on spotify like duh it's the only place you can listen to them right right so that makes a lot of logical sense but no her podcast being third after when she's available everywhere that must means her, mean her numbers are insane like probably like just huge yeah huge and number four of top podcast was uh k63 which is uh starring julianne moore and oscar isaac and number five is crime junkie Wow, those crime junkie girlies really kill it. Yeah, also they have this really sad category of top podcasts called most anticipated podcasts of the year, which means that it was based on their first week streams for a newly released series. And then obviously it fell off after that. And number one is- um, Archetypes. Archetypes, yep. Number yeah, of two- Of course, there was so much hype, like the Duchess is gonna sit down and podcast with the people. I know, but I just feel like they should have ignored this category because it's just sad. Wait, number two is Batman Unburied. Never heard of it. Number three is Kim Kardashian's The System. Yeah. Number four is K63. But I guess a lot of people listened to the first episode and then they liked it and they listened to more because it's in the yeah. other category. But and number like, five, oh, number five is Back to the Beach with Kristen and Steven. But I feel like that's surprising because oh. I would I didn't listen to the first episode. I listened to the last one. I feel like they probably grew during you could tell by the way just based on like public consumption like when they announced back to the beach it was huge and there was like 10 major stories that came out of it it was like every time they dropped an episode there was like a huge pr like so many things everywhere especially the last episode same with like but also that's really impressive because i think that's the only one on the list that's not spotify exclusive yeah no that's huge for dear media yeah but then like when you think about like the pr arc 
of Kim's podcast. It's like it was this big announcement. And then there was like a little controversy with the victims' families. But then like nothing, that's how you know it like started big because there was this big announcement, lots of press. And then nothing was ever picked up kind of assuming that the numbers fell. I feel like the same is with archetypes. Like, of course, everyone was quaking when the first episode came out. But then I don't think it was what a lot of people expected. It was very, um, like, not scripted, produced, thank you. Um, and I remember, like, the first two episodes, it was like, let's, like, there was so much uh, press about it. And now I just saw one thing about the final episode. It's like Andy Cohen's on it, and there's not even, like, a lot of fanfare for it. Yeah, I... Also, I think that's a pattern with celebrity podcasts in general, not just specific yeah. to Spotify, where it's like, Agreed. if you're a celebrity and launch a podcast, your first episode's going to be pretty big because people want to hear what you have to say and they're fans of you to begin with. But to commit someone to a podcast listener, like you are taking a minimum an hour out of the week, like to sit and listen to something for an hour, like you need to be so entertained. You're not doing it as a favor to the celebrity that you like and follow. Because also like you're listening privately. Aside from Spotify Wrapped, you don't share what you listen right. to. It's not like a virtue signal to be like, hey, I listen to I'm this. I'm a big fan. Yeah, no, that's so true. Like it's easy to get people to listen to a famous person's podcast the first few weeks. But like podcasts are really um, just judged by merit. Like what are they good? No, and it's an you're intimate a thing and, and it's have a, a lot private. of fans. That doesn't mean you're good. It's an intimate thing and it's a private thing. You're right about celebrity podcasts. And that's why like, you know, Conan and Smartless are so successful because not only are they actually famous, but their podcasts are actually good. Yes. Even though I've never listened to it, but. No, but the charts speak for the themselves. charts don't lie I don't think I don't know I don't think the they lie are editorialized but sometimes I think that they are well I feel like the Spotify ones might be a little editorialized because like they spent 100 million on Joe Rogan I mean I do think Joe Rogan is actually number one but like if I was Spotify and like Joe Rogan's episode like flopped I would still put him in like the top three just to like one give it more press people are checking the charts and two like you don't want to admit like your investment maybe was bad even though I yeah, don't think, I think had Joe a bad Rogan's investment. a bad example because he's literally one, two, <coughs> three, four, and five. Armchair expert. And he, all the other investments other than Joe Rogan, yes, I think it behooves them to lift them up. Give them a little. Right. Um, also, because honestly, that's how people discover podcasts. They go to the top charts. They say, I want to listen to the number one show, number two show, something that like looks good. And so it would behoove them to have the top shows looking good. That because, are their shows. You know what? Now that I think about it, like when Joe Rogan went to Spotify, there was like so much hoopla and fanfare and and he's had like controversies and stuff. I feel like he's always very current. Like him being number one makes sense. Same with Alex Cooper. Like her episodes, depending on guests, like are huge historic, like cultural moments. Now that I think about it, like Armchair Expert, like is kind of like, where is Armchair Expert? I don't ever hear anything about Armchair Expert. Me neither, but I also don't listen for Armchair. I don't like... It's not. But I feel like it would come up in our stories. He's He interviews famous people. No, no. I mean, yes, he interviews famous people. But even when he was on Apple, we never really talked that much I about guess. what he was doing. Because he has like conversations with like no one's really. It's not like a tea spilling like thing. It's conversations with people. Yeah, Same I with guess. Joe Rogan. Like he interviews all these people. But it's not really like they make buzzworthy headlines because he's just like getting to know people and talking to people. They're right. not there to like drop something. Yeah. Okay, this Which is, is I feel like what people go on Call Her Daddy to do, to drop something. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm in the top podcast. Did they change their artwork, Armchair Experts? I don't see it. I'm telling you, I'm a little... I oh, it's number 12. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's the podcasting news. And I feel like now that Spotify is really bumped up, aside from their Spotify originals, like it is really a good place to see but you can't really compare like I wish Apple would drop Spotify I mean um podcast information but then the shows that aren't on Spotify like in order to be the best you have to beat the best but I feel like the best and the best aren't even competing anymore right no and that's what's so interesting to me about podcasting in general is like it is this kind of mystery because you know you're following YouTubers you could see how many subscribers they have podcast numbers are all behind some sort of like dashboard and everyone you know on social media is like out here making look like their podcasts look like the baddest and the best and just because I'm like nosy I'm always curious like who actually gets a lot of downloads and like who doesn't and you can tell but like I would love like a little bit more transparency in that department yeah Darn. that's just because I'm nosy it's a mystery 
Yeah, but you know what? Maybe it's better because I feel like people put their heart and souls into podcasts and if it was really measured by like listeners and that was so public, like I feel like it would be a little disheartening as opposed to it's a slow grind and it's not like YouTube where it's so instantaneous and if this video didn't work, like let's do it in this video. Like you really have to build up and I feel like if it was more... Uh, competitive it might deter people and people might like be having conversations just so they get those numbers that those people are getting and I feel like this makes it a little more real and no that's actually really um I agree now you changed my mind (laughs) you're right it is so personal and people put like so much of their heart and soul into it yeah and I wouldn't want someone to think like say they did one episode that was like really personal intimate and like actually good but they just like didn't get a lot of listeners for whatever reason like I wouldn't want that podcaster and people knew that like I wouldn't want that podcaster to then be like well I'm never going to do that again because it didn't work like right, that's it's not how it is with podcasts and also sometimes the episodes that like get the most listens like I don't know what it is we talk about we were just talking about this well you know with our Spotify download you know what our most listened to episode of the year was you I just found out this morning and I never would have guessed right can I say it yeah Bridge to Terabithia which was a hilarious episode which also featured our interview with Jessica Knoll and I just I I never would have guessed that. I never would have guessed that either. You know what? I think that it was like, this is how I think of it. I think it was the end of a week episode before a long weekend. Because I remember I came to New York right after that. So maybe there was like a few days without episodes. So everyone listened to the most recent one. But we had longer breaks. And I I just, I don't know. And I I think Jessica Knoll is also like really niche. Yeah. And a whole different community of listeners who wanted to tune in for her interview. Oh, yeah, like we got new listeners. It's outside. Actually, what I thought was also really interesting that Spotify did was they'll tell you which episodes, like featuring guests. Share the things the- that you that you sent me. Okay, hold on. They, they uh, said I- they give you like a little wrap for the, your whole podcast. It's like 10 slides of data and it was fascinating stuff. This was interesting. We created 10,000 minutes of new content and that is more than 99% of other creators in the comedy category. But that's because we do sure. a show. Um, yeah Bridge to Ter- Bridget to Terabithia was our most listened to episode our top five countries are US, Canada the UK, Australia and Ireland shout our out podcast, to the Irish toasters our podcast was in the top 1% of most shared episodes like people either texting sending a direct link sending on Instagram WhatsApp which I thought was really interesting yeah WhatsApp was small we gotta work um, on that one okay so this episode attracted a lot of new listeners. So 3% of people, 3% of our audience started listening with this episode. So interesting. Sophia Yanklin with Sophia Franklin. Yeah. Now we did get a lot of press from that episode because she was talking about the Call Her Daddy drama. So like maybe that was it. I thought that was, that was a really good piece of data. Yeah. Um, And the rest of these were like, you know, kind of boring. We're in the top 1% of most followed podcasts. Look at us. That makes sense. There's so many podcasts. But what's so interesting, and I think it's just what makes Spotify so smart for doing this, obviously, is like people love it. So like they're everyone, I cannot keep up with how many people are tagging me in their stories. But Spotify is also now becoming like a major data company. And that's how you make all the money in tech, like having people's data. And every year they're just like accruing the shit out of everyone's data. It's so smart. But they also present it in a way that we love. Like if you tell me you're selling my data, I'm like, goodbye, I'm deleting your app. Right. But if you tell me I'm gonna learn something about myself or my data and it'll be in these like <laughs> shareable, snackable cards I could post to my Instagram, click subscribe. That's so true. <laughs> um, and I also, while we're talking about wrapped, I wanna hear your Spotify wrapped. Oh, it was very predictable. Um, it what was- were your top five songs and who were your top five artists? My top five artists were, okay. Top artists, Taylor Swift, Luke Combs, John Mayer, Morgan Wallen, Kelsey Ballerini. So it's like very country. Yeah. What was your top genre? Pop, which is Same. weird. Nah, everything's pop. Yeah. What were your top songs? Okay, so number one was 100% by Claudia. <laughs> is that because of your shows? No. Oh, you just really were listening to yourself on repeat. I honestly don't even remember listening to it that much, which is like kind of crazy. Do you think that maybe like you put it on repeat one song, like when it launched to like, no, it doesn't sound like that. you. I know. I'm, I'm not like desperate like that. I mean, I am, but like. But not really like that. Bad. No, not if it means you have to listen to your song over and over again. 
Right. Number two, doing this, Luke Combs. Three, Heart First, Kelsey Ballerini. Four, Tomorrow Me by Luke Combs. And five, She's in Love with the Boy by Trisha Yearwood, a 90s classic. Gorgeous. And then artists, I told you already. Yeah. What about you? Top artist, number one, Luke Combs. I think I'm Luke Combs' biggest fan ever, more than any of the other sisters, because he was my number one artist, and he's four out of my five top songs. Wow. My number two artist was Frédéric Chopin. That's um, an ode to Harry. We listened to a lot of classical music, but I had no idea that I was listening to Chopin so much more than... So much more than Ludwig or Amadeus Mozart. Like, yeah. Who's Amadeus? Mozart. Mozart. Okay. Yeah, or Ludwig van Beethoven. Honestly, that was a shock for me. Three, Taylor Swift. Four, Morgan Wallen. Five, Mimi Webb. Cute. Then my top songs were one, Tomorrow Me. Two, Middle of Somewhere, my favorite song. Three, The Kind of Love We Make. Four, Want That Back by Brett Eldridge. Gorgeous song. Check it out. Five, Doing This, Luke. Such a Luke girly. I'm such. I'm a bigger Luke Holmes fan than Snatcher. Alert the wow, press. Wow, don't let Snatcher hear that. Well, she's going to see the data and she's going to know for herself. My favorite thing about Spotify rap, we talk about this every year, is when people are like, that that seems right. It's like, no, 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 it's literally facts. It's correct. No, it's your data, so it should feel right. No, it, so it oh. is right. So Wait, Jackie, is right. Jackie, I literally, I did that You today. posted that to your story, but as it like a ironic, no? No, I was like, no, this feels right. Oh my God, you were making fun of me. <laughs> I thought you did that ironically because we always say that. And I thought, Do you think I honestly, remember that, that we said that? Honestly, this is how delusional I am. I thought it was like an ode to the redheads because we always say that when we finish the rating for the book. Like that's what it every, was. No, that's totally. Everyone gives their rating and then I do the average and every single time we have snitch. That feels right. Um, no, that's really why I did it. So I that's what I honor thought. The I actually, I was not making fun of you to your face. No, no, no. You didn't know that you were like making fun of me because I actually used that caption completely unironically and it just genuinely felt right. <laughs> because it was right. What do you know? What do you know? Okay, are you ready for our next story? If it's the next story that's brought to you by Legacy Box. Mm-hmm. The best gift for you or your family. It's what Better Homes and Gardens called the most sentimental gift to make this holiday season special. Plus, with their Cyber Monday event, more families can reclaim priceless footage with an insane 65% off. So Legacy Box is a simple and safe way to digitize your treasured videotapes, film reels, photos, and they've helped over a million families, even ours, do just that. Everything is done by hand right here in the U.S. They'll convert your media to digital copies, and then they'll always be protected from floods, mold, even the decay of time. So this is probably the sponsor I get the most questions about, especially now with holiday season rolling around like over the weekend five people wrote in toast after dark what is the legacy box code so legacy box is digitizing by hand all of your old memories we grew up in the vhs age but whether you have like cassettes camcorders i don't know whatever you got legacy box can do it their cyber week event is here they are giving our listeners the best deal of the year. So visit LegacyBox.com slash toast to save an unreal 65% off. This is an amazing gift. You obviously can gift it to someone and they don't have to send it out immediately. They can hang on to it, you know, go into storage in a few months, get all their old VHSs out of storage. But you have the box, you can get the offer right now. So you'll save the money, give it to the person and then they can do it whenever they want. It comes with a label. It's so easy. And then you get emails along the way updating you of like what's going on. Like it just arrived. We're doing this. I think I got like total 12 emails when I do it. So like it feels like you're literally handing over a piece of your heart you want to make sure that like it's not lost they are always keeping you updated on the progress and the process of what they're doing so with limited quantities that are ready to ship this deal will go fast legacybox.com slash toast for 65 percent off legacybox.com slash toast Today's episode is also brought to you by Bruch, an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra gentle bristles, the Bruch redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling when you just leave the dentist. It's a fresh, whole mouth clean, but every single day. Get 20% off when you pick up your Bruch brush kit and the plan at bruch.com slash toast. So when you get the Bruch kit, it includes the electric toothbrush, three brush heads, a magnetic charging station, a sleek travel case, and what I love most about it is that the battery life lasts four weeks. So if you don't want to have a charger on your countertop, you can just leave the charger in your cabinet and then like it looks really sleek. If you're traveling, you don't have to like bring your charger with you unless you're traveling for more than a month, in which case I'm very jealous. Um, so it can last an entire 30 days on a full charge. It's perfect for tra- traveling and a countertop being charger cord free. 
It's a fabulous toothbrush. It's a fabulous stocking stuffer. It's also a really affordable electric toothbrush. A lot of the toothbrushes out there like cost insane amounts. But when you go to tw- brush.com slash toast, B-R-U-U-S-H dot com slash toast, you will get 20% off when you pick up the Bruch brush kit and the plan at brush.com slash toast, B-R-U-U-S-H dot com. Get the toothbrush that is industry leading, uses sonic technology and produces 42,000 brush strokes per minute, which is 300 times 300 brush strokes per minute. It helps with deep cleaning, hard to reach places, the gums, the tongue, the molars. Bruce.com slash toast. Thank you, McClardia. You're welcome. Our next story, another little year end review moment. People Magazine has put forth their People of the Year. Hmm. The four celebs who were here to help in 2022. So the Wait, f- let me guess. What is the concept? People honors four people for the inspiring work they did this year. Would it be helpful if I shared last year's people of the year? Yeah, because are these like philanthropists? Yeah, philanthropists, activists, like good, good doing celebrities. Okay. Here's last year. Dolly Parton, Simone Wait. Biles, Sandra O, oh, and America's Teachers. Okay, so... And the year before was George Clooney, Dr. Fauci, Selena Gomez, and Regina King. So it's like... Um, so who did a lot this year? Who what? Who did a lot this year? I feel like Harry Styles did a lot, but not from like a philanthropy or like activisms. You know, he just like was working a lot. Yeah, no, it's not I about who works the hardest. Okay. Right. Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Quinta Brown. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mila Kunis. Yeah. And Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. Okay, those are pretty good. Mm Mm-hmm. It does feel like, you know, all of them were out there doing the most. Yeah. By the way, trying their best. Yeah. Did you hear anything about the new J-Hud show? No, this was actually in this article. It was like the first I heard about it since we talked about that she was getting a show. Yeah, I haven't heard much about it. Is it not on cable? I think it's on Peacock. Really? Because I the first, I just saw, because I followed Jamila Jamil on Instagram, she went on and she was like going on Peacock TV and it was like J-Hud. Oh, interesting. So I just want to Google that because I was so confused. Like, Also, let's not a- forget that J-Hud won an EGOT this year. So for oh, that wow. reason alone she should be people of the year but she also um has a very mission-oriented talk show she's also she's on cable i apologize but um i believe she's also probably being promoted hard on tick on uh peacock i almost said tiktok yeah <laughs> still on tiktok you know i feel like people magazine is like constantly putting together lists it's like the one thing keeping their business afloat they're making a list and checking it twice to take the bedores down they're literally taking the bedore zone. This is the time of year where we get lists galore. I personally yeah. really like them. I love to see my year in list form. We do some At lists a for um, December Patreon episodes. Top this, top that. Um, so I just, I like to ingest see what other people think are tops of the year. I just I, I don't do. know why I don't know why Kelly Clarkson doesn't make these lists to me they're like rooted in, in error because of that I do also like like that the end of the year means we get a lot of lists and we get to look at our year at a glance but some of the lists feel stupid and this is one of them <laughs> do you agree I agree like they said a whole bunch of nothing about what they're even saying about these people like what they're saying about these people is that here's the quote the boldest thing that we can do question mark help I've been thinking a lot about what inspires someone to take action, to donate their time and money and passion to a cause, to do anything more than fire off a tweet or an Instagram post. It's been on my mind because the world seems to need our help more than ever, and also because the people we celebrate in this issue didn't hesitate to meet the moment. They didn't ask why me or wait for permission or get caught up in self-doubt. They just moved. Okay, like that's a pretty decent description because, you know... um Matthew McConaughey and Uvalde and Ukraine for Mila Kunis. So, like, I get it. I just feel like this list is dumb. I can't explain why. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, especially when you, like, look back at past winners. It's not like... 
No, also because when you think of lists from People Magazine, like you think of Most Beautiful and it's like stick to the dumb shit, you know? Well, they're clearly wanting to be like a list where you can find the outsides and the insides. Yeah, they want to be beautiful on the outside and the inside. I appreciate that. But like for me, People Magazine like is an airport tabloid. Like it will always, I will never read a People Magazine if I'm not on an airplane. Yeah, I agree. Stick to the superficial lists. And... And the freak show circus greatest showman stories about, you know, cousins who married cousins. And I want a list about the craziest stories of the year. Yes, that's what People Magazine, like 10 of the biggest freak shows of 2022. Dogs. I want just people's biggest freak show. You decide what's yeah. number one. Put them on the cover. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Like the wildest stories of 2022 because they'll find it, you know, family locked up in chains, yeah. For 35 years. Like, they'll always find terrible stories like that. Yeah. I There was one recently. Um, I, I don't know if I read it in People, but about the 30-year embryos. What's that? This couple um, adopted embryos because a lot of embryos that aren't used just, like, stay frozen. But people can adopt an embryo and then carry it and give birth to an embryo. So this couple intentionally adopted the oldest embryo available that yeah they adopted the oldest embryo available because like they wanted to give this oh it's an adoption it's i don't know if that's the correct word but that's essentially what it is like you adopt the embryo and then you carry it yourself interesting so they intentionally uh adopted the oldest embryo so that you know that embryo could come off the shelf and the embryo is technically 30 years old so these are like 30 year old babies well that's a very hot take if you know life starts at conception but i know what you're saying like um wait why would the couple go for what do you want like the freshest one like you want the best yes no but that's the thing like most people go for the freshest one so this couple like wanted to give like the oldest embryo that would probably never come off the shelf like a chance at life that was their this mission. story is very weird. This, this story is very weird because like, no, that's, if it's, that's what I'm if saying. If it's frozen, they're all the same age, no? And they're embryos. They're not 30 year olds. No, they're not 30 year olds, but technically like they've been. What? So the kid comes out with like a receding hairline and a No, it's, they're babies. They are babies, but like they were technically created 30 years ago so it was just like 30 year old babies was the headline to make it sound fucking crazy oh because people magazine was clickbaiting us got it okay understood right but like if you if you make your own embryos and like they were technically frozen two years ago like you don't say i have a two-year-old of course not that's psychotic right, but like, the idea that they were frozen 30 years ago like makes it you know a crazy headline which it is crazy i just want to say like the concept when people go into adoption like they say like the newborns like they always get adopted and then that's how kids end up like 12 13 in the system so to adopt a 12 or 13 year old is such an admirable thing to do i don't think the same applies to embryos like those people should have just taken the freshest one okay no but that's the same concept to them of like everyone's going for the freshest ones Uh, we're not worried about them they will get i get it but i'm telling these people it's not the same like, I, like they're looking at it through the lens of like adoption. It's not the same. But otherwise those embryos would have never come off the shelf. No, I understand that. I'm just now learning that embryos can be adopted. Like this is huge for me. I guess like it totally makes sense. But, like I just literally never thought of that. When yeah, because a lot of people create embryos that I mean we see we've that seen they don't end times, up using. That they don't end up using. And we saw it like with celebrities, what happens to the embryos? That, Some, okay. Jackie, literally, I was just going to say, I can't think of embryos without thinking of that terrible story about what, what happened to Sofia Vergara and her evil ex-husband. Right. So if they don't, like, make the decision to discard the embryos, they they stay frozen and they sit there and, and people could then adopt them. No, it's nice. I never thought about it, but it, it makes sense. Yeah, I sent you the article. You should have read it. There was a lot of interesting stuff in there. Yeah, I did. Hmm. Got to catch up on my reading. Like, like it's not something where you just read the headline and like keep reading. It's it's wild. Oh yeah, you went through also, like a you went through a weird bout where you were sending like really fucking weird articles to me about like like baby stuff. Like this mom found her baby's diaper full of blood. What happened <laughs> next? What happens next is unexpected. Like you were going it, through Claudia, a Claudia. That was the craziest story. It was a crazy story. It was a story. Let about me tell a baby you guys. Had, yeah, this like mom early found her baby. Her baby girl's diaper was full of blood. Maybe she was one years old. She wasn't like a newborn, but she was still in diapers. And so she took her to the hospital. Like she was freaking out. And it turned out that the girl 
had her first period. She had like early onset menstruation, which is a thing that like happens. It's extremely it's very, rare. Very, it was like early onset puberty. Yes. And I guess when it happens, like you end up in the New York Post. So I did read that it. article. And that's why I didn't read the next article you sent, which was about the 30 year old babies. Because I'm like, this girl is trying to freak me out. Like, but you didn't find like that didn't make you want to read like more crazy articles not really because like i just feel like i could have lived without knowing that like there is a condition where like you can be getting your period and pubic hair and breasts at two years old like i could have lived without knowing that but now yeah. i had to share it on the podcast and now everyone knows and now we've said it okay also i think it's worth saying the 30 year old baby embryos i believe they're twins or they're genetic siblings and like two embryos were implanted right. Okay. But there was two of them, not just okay. one, two. Yeah. So check it out for yourself. Interesting reading coming from Jackie. You should work for People Magazine. <laughs> yeah, I can like vet what's interesting enough. <laughs> yeah, what's wacky enough. Wacky enough for Jackie. That'll be like the name of your column, ja Wacky Jackie. Oh my God, you guys should give me a column, People Magazine, after how we just slandered you to Phil. <laughs> Well, that was like when I remember growing up, there was a column in the New York Post called Weird But True. And it was like the weirdest crimes that went on in the city that week. And it really was like always crazy. Yeah, they're still, that's, they still have that column. It's a good one. Mm hmm Are you ready for our next story? We've got to move on. We've got to. Um, oh my God, we've got to, because we still have your toasters. I know, I know. Okay, our next story is Netflix has a new streaming giant show that has overtaken Stranger Things. Wednesday. Billions of minutes have been streamed. It is the new smash hit. Wednesday. Wednesday becomes a smash hit for Netflix as it dethrones Stranger Things and breaks the streaming giant's viewership record. You know what? Good. Those Stranger Things kids needed to be humbled. Yeah, for sure. Tim Burton's Wednesday has become a smash hit for Netflix in its debut week on The Streaming Giant. The show, which stars Jenna Ortega as the main character, Christina Ricci and Catherine Zeta-Jones, racked up a record-making 341.2 million viewing hours, whatever the fuck that means, and beat Stranger Things, according to Netflix. It is also the number one show in 83 countries, tying with Stranger Things. I mean, it's kind of a brilliant concept. One, because it's Tim Burton and people like really love and admire and follow his work. Two, it's like the cult fam, fan favorite of the Adams family, but totally reimagined, but with the original Wednesday Adams playing someone else. And with Catherine Zeta Jones, I think she played the mom, Morticia. Yeah. She's playing someone else too. So it's like, it has elements and it's like nods to the original show, but with a whole new concept. I think it's like a really, really well done. I don't want to say reboot, but like, reimagination it's a yeah. very smart idea i'm not personally into adam's family or like spooky shows like i don't watch stranger things but i get why this is so big it's actually surprising to me that it's so big because i feel like for all the reasons that you described like it would be really good and really well received like and critically acclaimed. acclaimed but when i think of like tim burton and i think of the adams family definitely huge devoted audiences but also kind of niche so to know that like that audience is the biggest audience on netflix that to me is surprising i'm here for it i'm happy for all of the burton toasters and adams stands i just am surprised to know that it's really that big of numbers well, also, if you think about it, like it's really bridging like a generational gap because people who loved the Adams family are much older now. And Jenna Ortega is like this everything of the sort, stunning, like Instagram girly. Um, so it's really got something for everyone. And you love when there's something for everyone. I do. But you know what the Adams family makes me think of? This is how I know if we'll have if we have the same brain. You've already we've had this conversation. I know what you're going to say. Da 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 dum. Da 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 dum. Da 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 dum, da 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 dum, da 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 dum. There's Olivia and Marco, Claudia and Jackie. They're all a little wacky, the Ashray family. Ba da da dum. That was like a little jingle they made up in camp about us. It was pretty cool. I'll add it to the list of stories since I literally knew what you were going to say. No, I really don't say that one as much as I should. And like, am I becoming that girl who like peaked at camp? Like, all I do is talk about camp. Like, it's like embarrassing. No, I don't think that means that you peaked at camp. No. Do you think you've peaked yet? In, I think there are like different, like in certain realms, yes, but in other realms, no. Like I think Sorry. I've, I think I've maybe have peaked in looks to sadly. Oh, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. But you I don't know think why that you like, haven't? 
I feel like I'm not ne- necessarily like even peaked in like fulfillment and happiness. But let me tell you why I don't think you've peaked in looks because mm-hmm. your breast reduction is ahead of you and it's That's over so for everyone true. when that happens. That's so true. Yeah. yeah, everyone, like you better hide out. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Yeah, no, but so I just feel like there's more waiting for me that like I didn't, ex- like that I haven't experienced yet and I will peak in those areas like other, in or even I'm peaking in those areas now. Mm-hmm. Um, but in other realms, like in certain areas, my best days might be behind me. That's, That's okay. That's interesting. Yeah. What about you? Do you think you're peaking? You're kind I of think- like viral on TikTok. You're like so slender. You have two hit songs. I don't jag it. I don't want to, um, honestly, like I don't want to say it, you know, like jinx. Like I just feel like I'm like kind of like in like my, like my era right now. Like I really don't want to jinx it. I understand I also, that you don't want to jinx it, but it's like if you don't recognize that you're, if you don't realize I that you're in your it era. Personally. Okay. But like, oh, so for everyone out there, like if you don't realize in your best era that this is your best era, like you stand the chance of like missing it. No, I'm fully acknowledged that I think like my physical peak is like is like two months ahead of me. Like I'm really I've gotten so good on like my journey and my makeup and my hair. Like I feel like it's and I had like major weight loss a few years ago, but I was like so bad at my makeup and like so dumb and young. Like I wasn't able to like really maximize the weight loss. And now I just feel like I'm much more mature. I'm much more refined. And I just feel like my physical peak, like it, it's happening, especially now that I'm really thinking about my breast reduction. Like once that happens, like you're, you can't get rid of me, bitch. Like I will be yeah. in bikini photos, like taking pictures all over this country. But then do you also feel like, so you're having this physical peak, which you've looked great at other times before. So it's not necessarily anything new, but you're also like a viral TikToker. Everyone's talking about you. Like you're the voice of your generation. Your podcast is now number five. Maybe in the last weight loss, like it was number 15. No, and I think we would be remiss to not acknowledge like how this has really been a great year for our business. Like we're very, very lucky and very blessed. Um, Of course, you know, TikTok is everything, but you know, the podcast and just like businesses, is going good we should acknowledge that because you know there's been many times part of this business is peaks and valleys peaks and valleys and there have been many valleys over the last few years so we have to acknowledge the peaks and this has really been a great year and we couldn't have done it without the toasters so true so i think i wake up every day and i think the toaster is like for for believing in us Mm -hmm. and for enjoying the show and enjoying our certain special brand of humor our certain special brand of humor and just like forgetting us for understanding us not yeah. forgetting us for space get getting space us. us yeah please don't forget us that's literally my worst nightmare <laughs> um what were we talking about peaking so if you're out there and you've peaked well you know what pressure's off what was the if story you're cur- if you're currently peaking enjoy it and if it's ahead of you anticipate it yeah it's all good what was the story how did we start talking about this wednesday adams Peaked hmm. at camp. Got it. Okay, thank you for the for the re- retraction. Retracing? Our next story is about one of Claudia's favorite people, and oh. it's about probably his favorite people. That's really confusing. Brendan Fraser hits the red carpet with his two handsome sons, oh. Holden, 18, and Leland, 16, so just note the ages before you say anything crazy, at the whale screening in New York City. The fuck would so, I say? No, I don't know. Like, like one sixteen. Like they're like, um, they're made in the image of Brendan, but like they're. Minors. Oh, are they really hot? They're they're nice looking boys. Yeah. Okay, so what did you? I'm so confused. What you thought I was going to say? Like something mean? No, 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 no. Like something just, inappropriate. Um, yeah. Got it. Okay, but they're minors. Thank you for the heads up. I understand. I must look up a picture of these children. Yeah, uh, Leland and Holden. Uh, the 53-year-old actor hit the red carpet with his handsome sons at a New York City screening of The Whale. The teens looked just like their famous dad when he was a young Hollywood pinup in films like Encino Man and George of the Jungle. They really, they look different from one another, but they both look like Brendan. Mm-hmm. And it's really sweet family moment. I don't know why I can't find this picture. What? Oh, Daily Lee Mail. Daily Mail. Here, here, here. Yeah, oh. Daily Mail was. Oh, wow. Wow. They're extremely like handsome. I, are they models? They have like that model look. I mean, they're, I think they're still in school. Who knows what they're gonna do? But I feel like they could go into the industry if they so oh choose. God. They're probably, man, I'm, like, I can't help but honestly get like, like teary eyed. They must be so proud of their dad. Oh my God, I'm literally gonna cry. 
they must be because so they like weren't dad. alive for his heyday and they yeah. probably have just really experienced some of the hard few years that he went through and now to like be in new york city screening his movie that's like gonna be nominated for an oscar gonna be nominated for everything and their dad is the man of the hour like i'm sure it's a big moment um, and he was there with his girlfriend, his longtime partner. Yeah, I think she's a makeup artist. Her name is... But she is not the parent, the mom, excuse me. Jen, Jan Moore. Oh, I don't know if she's... the. Yeah, that's... No, so Afton point. Smith is the parent. Got it. That's interesting. I want to know who that is. Afton Smith, yeah. Wow, that is so cute. I love, I need to see this movie. I know. And did you keep scrolling for the pictures of Brendan and Sadie Sink? No. Oh my God. Give They're me one so cute. I literally, like, I'm obsessed with that friendship. Obsessed. We need to see this movie, McClard. I know. Like, we need to plan a date night. Is it out yet? Who knows? It's probably coming out around the holidays. Add it to your list with Crawdads. I do think it's a very um, like sad and, and depressing movie. So just trigger warning. True. And I hope no, no dogs die. I will be so upset. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it back to that. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Little lighthearted news. Sure. Real Houses of Miami taglines are here. Oh. And they're pretty good. Okay. First up, we have Alexia. She says, quote, in Miami, the sun brings the heat, but I bring the fire. Cute. Strong. Larsa, my favorite. I love she said, too. hate all you want, because if I were you, I'd hate me too. Oh, that's that. fucking nasty. Like, if I were you, I'd hate me too. Yeah, jealous wench. Wench, That's all yeah. that's missing at the bottom. If I right. were you, I'd hate me too, wench. You jealous wench. <laughs> Next, Gertie. The only thing that moves faster than my mouth is my ambition. Mm. It's not great because, like, while I admire your ambition, it's really admirable. Like, it's not really pertinent to this show. No, and the first half is strong because her mouth moves fast, but then it, it's, like, giving, like, it's, like, we're on Peacock. This is a different era. Like, everyone has leveled up, and it's just, like, yeah. giving old housewives, like, the only thing about me is me. Yeah, no, so true. Like, Real Housewives of Miami definitely stands out as, like, a much better, like, highly produced, younger, fresher version of Housewives. And this is giving very much, like, you know, in this town, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Then we have Julia. She said... When the chicks fly the coop, it's time for this mama bird to spread her wings. It's okay. It's good because she's the farm girl and, and her I'm girls her are daughters. leaving. And now she's uh, spreading her wings. I actually, I think that it is, it's not what I would want for mine, but it's, it's, it's fine. Pretty good. It's, it's, it's apt. Next, the most interesting cast member of the season, Lisa Hochstein. Mm. You can try to take my castle, but you will never steal my crown. So is she losing her castle? Yeah, because like she's divorcing no, Lenny. No, I know. Um, and so I feel like she's like talking to Lenny. You know, you can try and take yeah. my castle. But he's not trying to steal her crown. Like I feel like it should be like, you could try to take my castle, but I'll always have my crown. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Like conceptually, it's good. Execution wise, it needed like a few tweaks. It's fine. I do think this will be incredibly interesting to watch. Their divorce is like so Messy. bad. Yeah, I feel, I, it's like, really sad did she sign a prenup i remember they spoke about it last season i don't know i feel like she probably did i feel like she didn't or actually i know it was discussed i can't remember mm. anyways um if they want to tinker it to what i suggested before the show airs we'll pretend like we didn't see this free idea and then your favorite housewife dr nicole martin uh what happens to marisol she's still friend of she might be and and uh adriana's not well, Adriana and Marisol were both friend of. I would have thought after the season, Adriana would be asked to leave permanently and Marisol would have been a full-time housewife, even though I think she doesn't want to be. Yeah, well, Dr. Nicole said, I'm a pro at the rules of engagement and I have the ring to prove it. I like wouldn't really flex about that because there was so much weirdness around her engagement. How she spent the whole season being like, we're so happy not engaged. We're so happy. And then she got engaged. 
Yeah, I wouldn't flex about it just because like it's not like you were cl- like trying for a ring this whole time and now you got it. Like it the way that you pretended you made like it you seem, didn't it's want like it. you didn't even notice that you're engaged or not engaged. Totally. Well, Real Housewives Miami actually is very good. And even though I've been kind of on like a housewives break, I will definitely be watching because Peacock is easy. hundred percent. I'm totally gonna watch. And it's really yeah. a very good franchise. And I like a lot of the ladies, like a lot. Yeah, no, I have to be watching for my girl Larsa and Lisa. Lisa, for me, I'm like Alexia and Marisol till I die. I know you really are. I like maybe it's like a nostalgia from the old show um, because I was really like obsessed with Alexia back then and Mama Elsa. I don't know why. It's not even because I think they're necessarily like always, you know, on the right side or they're the most fabulous. I love their friendship. I love that they're like OGs who are still bringing it and like they're still fabulous. I just really like them. Good. I like that for you. So those were the past five, but do not fret because today's episode is far from over because we've got Dear Toasters. It's Wednesday. Our advice segment, Dear Toasters, is every Wednesday and you can be featured. You know, if you have a problem that something you're going through, email us, deartoasters at gmail.com. We'll, of course, keep your name out of it. It's totally anonymous. You can change people's names just to, you know, protect the privacy of those involved. But we've got three great submissions today and they're brought to you by Diff Eyewear. So Diff Eyewear Sunnies are pulling double duty. When I wake up and I'm not feeling flawless, my oversized trend sunglasses from Diff Eyewear can handle the little in-between moments in life. We all know that oversized sunnies are super glam and they can make every outfit outfit really feel like a chic fashion moment. But personally, I love them because they transcend fashion. They become an actual functional need for me. They look fabulous to hide my eyes when I'm hungover or if I have a puffy face or I'm just like not feeling the paparazzi that day. There's so many chic oversized diff shades like the edgy goldies or the glam Becky twos that really get the job done. They're basically the hangover shades because after too much fun on a Saturday night out, heading to that brunch the next day, you're feeling the red puffy eyes. You've got a little bit of light sensitivity. Bam. Throw on a pair of oversized diff sunnies and you'll instantly look put put together, hangover gone. I also just got a bunch of new sunnies for my trip to Belize. The end of this month and I generally steer towards like oversized glasses I'm always online looking for like huge Kardashian vibe like Kris Jenner really has really good ones and they're like a million dollars Diff has great options they're super affordable tons of different colors different vibes more trendy more classic Oversized sunnies can rescue you if you want to save face and make your outfit a little bit more fab. So again, the oversized trendy shades are handling those moments where you don't feel like showing your face, but you gotta. Right now, you can score a sweet deal for the holidays. Diff is offering an amazing 50% off. Plus, visit eyewear, diffeyewear.com slash toast for a chance to win $1,000 cash and score your own Diff sunnies for a year. Or Diff... Um, the oversized sunnies for an entire year or the thousand dollars cash excuse me so that's diff eyewear.com slash toast they're having a huge sale amazing 50 percent off but they're also doing a chance to win a thousand dollars cash and score your own diff sunnies for a year today's episode is also brought to you by modern fertility think back to sex ed for a moment you probably learned all about how to prevent pregnancy but did you ever learn about how to plan for it that's why modern fertility was created an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within six days you'll get insights into your hormone levels like your ovarian reserve other important factors that you can that can impact your fertility as well the results go deep into what every hormone means and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps traditional hormone testing at a fertility clinic can cost over six hundred dollars but modern fertility tests the same general set of hormones at a fraction of the price and if you go to modernfertility.com slash toast three zero you can get thirty dollars off your test plus you can get reimbursed for the test through your fsa or hsa if you want kids today or maybe one day in the future clinically sound information about your body can help make the decision that's right for you there's never a bad time to start planning for the future whether you're thinking about kids or not thinking about kids this is information that's becoming now really accessible to you through modern fertility and it's really affordable when you go to the doctor there's like so much torture you have to wait in line talk to receptionist you have to spend a lot of money modern fertility comes straight to your door it's much more affordable and you're getting the same information like insights into your ovarian reserve tons of important factors so right now modern fertility is offering oh oh my god you scared me with that sneeze (laughs) oh my god Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $30 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast30. It's a limited time offer for $30 off, and that means that your test will cost just $149 when hormone testing at a fertility clinic it can cost three times as much. $30 off your fertility test at modernfertility.com slash toast30. Modernfertility.com slash toast30. All right, are you ready for Dear Toaster Jacks? We've got three great submissions. Can't wait. Hey, girlies. Love you both. 
Here's some backstory. I've been with my boyfriend who's 24 for two years and we recently moved in together. I love him so much. He's amazing. No complaints. However, he has this bear. He's had bear, which is literally his name and his gender as a boy. He's had bear since he was a baby and has slept with it ever since. Bear, no, I'm sorry. Whenever we were long distance, it didn't bother me because when I spent the night, he put bear away and he never brought it to a sleepover. But now that we live together, he asks to sleep with it and it makes me so uncomfortable. To add to the weirdness, he loves to hug it, put his nose to its nose, and the whole relationship is just so weird to me. I don't know what to do because no matter how much I complain, he still sleeps with the bear. I understand the attachment, but at what point do you let something go? What should I do? The bear has to go. It's giving Balenciaga. <gasps> oh! Jackie, no, the thing is, is like there are grown ass adults out here with like Blanky and Bear. No, and there's not. Yes, there is. Wait. No, like maybe there's a handful. Yeah, no, that's not a- like a, that's not a thing. It's, it's not like a thing that we're, unless it's fucking Ted and he's slinging hilarious. bongs with you and driving you to your work. This is unacceptable. He you got he needs to go to therapy. You can go with him if you're really interested in making this relationship work, but this is not like a fully formed adult. Sorry. Jackie, I want you to know that that's a really hot take. Like there are a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of our listeners, like they have blankies that are literally being held on by a thread. I just want you to know one, it's different if it's a girl, like everything else. Oh, literally. And two, there's a difference between having like a sentimental item from your childhood. Like if you still have your blanket from your childhood and like you keep it, like that is cool. Sweet. To sleep with it every single night, put your nose to its nose, call it bear, and it's like the third person in your thruple, that is a shade too far. I agree. And you like you have this like transference of like dependence on this thing. And that is a psychological thing that you need to like go to therapy for to become like a dependent, independent adult. Not like that's what a two year old does with a bear. They they right. like transfer their like love and like neediness almost onto like an inanimate object which is actually a really good thing it helps them like detach from being so needy with their parents they transfer and then they become independent your boyfriend hasn't done that yet and like he needs to get there it sounds like he needs to unburden himself of this bear yeah it's not and like especially if you're not someone who's like down with it and like thinking that it's fine like you wrote into us like it bothers you it's hindering his adult relationships and at a certain point it's going to be me or bear i think that he should get like a uh, therapy to help him make this transference and then but and, and he'll transfer all of this bareness onto you which also is kind of unhealthy because he still yeah. has never been independent no that's a good point like therapy i feel like is probably the best advice that we could give this girl that's a really good call um we're also just not people who can relate to this whatsoever like we don't have blankies like at camp like all these girls had like their blankies and we were like 16 17 and they were like literally pieces of string like they had been deteriorating okay, but, like, at over camp, the years okay first of all if you're a camper at camp the maximum you could be is 15 but if you're like a, you could also be an eight-year-old. If you're an eight-year-old with your blankie from home at camp, like that makes sense. You are homesick. This is no, a piece I'm of your house. No, I'm talking about like 16-year-olds. Well, I don't, okay, well, I don't know who you're talking about and I feel like you're exaggerating. And if you're not no, like that. I'm not exaggerating. I don't even want to say, but like literally, I just saw a reel yesterday of our girl, Rach Parcells. She brought her blankie on vacation there in Hawaii. So I'm telling you, it's like a really common thing that like, it's not as crazy as you think it is. It's her it's blankie so from her bl- childhood? Or it's her favorite blanket from home that like she's going away from home and no, she wants a piece Jackie, of home. No, Jackie, it's a blankie. Like I'm telling you, you're not understanding. Like this is a very common thing. Please not send me Rach's men. TikTok right now. I If anybody's going to convince me otherwise, it's Rach. Send me the TikTok right now, right now and I'll tell you why it's different. Jackie, she put it on reels and you're supposed to be a reels person. Well, she obviously didn't share the reels to her story. Look, literally she posted something about her husband. It was very funny. Actually, maybe it was on TikTok. Sorry. Yeah, 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 it was. Trying to gaslight me saying, I don't know Rach's content. No, I'm telling you. Here. Waking my husband up with my baby blanket, Marsha, to see his reaction. So she has a name for it. It's her baby blanket. Right, okay, so she knows it's weird. It's a crusty old blanket, and he throws it across the room and says, get it off of me. Because they acknowledge that it's weird. No, I, by the way, I agree that it's- There is self-awareness. It's, there's a little bit of dysfunction and like something psychological, but I just wanted you to know, like this is not, like this is for people our age, like it's actually weird. Like a lot of people have this. They're not okay. I'm sorry. And the thing is about Rachel, like, I'm not worried about her and her dependence on her blankie because she's like a fully, like she has a thriving life and a full life and she is like, she's okay, it seems. Um, 
but this is like a 24 year old man who's like venturing into adulthood and like this is a critical time for him and he needs yeah. to transfer his dependence from bear and i'm sorry and also like there's something like a little less weird about it when it's a girl versus a boy jackie 100 percent like when it's and by the way when it's rach versus a lay person <laughs> no of course and we also need to discuss like how one of the benefits of living in the patriarchy is like we can do things like we that can get away can. with stuff we can get away with stuff so i don't whenever you want to you know disestablish the patriarchy i support the movement but keep in mind there are a few benefits and your blankie is one of them yeah and we're getting away with it but not for long not, for not long. if i have anything to say about it all right are you ready for our next one mm -hmm. how you doing ladies i have a predicament my husband and i have been together for almost four years at the very beginning like three or four months in i was super insecure and i got on his phone one night while he was sleeping i muted literally every single female on his following list that i was even a little threatened by i knew he'd probably realize if i unfollowed them so that's why i just muted them now we've been together for so long and I've been to therapy and I feel secure in our relationship. I mean, we're literally married now. But the other day I remembered that I did this and now I just don't know what to do. Should I tell him? Should I secretly take his phone again and undo it? Should I just leave it alone and take this to the grave? I feel bad because some of the girls were his close friends and I'm even close friends with some of them now and I don't know what to do. Help. Honestly, what? like I, f I feel like if you come out with it, like you will look a little crazy. No, like, don't come out with it. The only thing that you could maybe do if you need feel the need to do something is slowly one by one unmute a few people. You can't undo it all at once. He'll get this flood of b -b bikini he'll think models. He was hacked. No, and he'll just be like, "Hey, what's all this, puss?" Like, no, but you I also think don't need to unmute anyone. Like a famous model, leave them muted. But like close friends, like who unmute. aren't posting like titillating stuff. Like, but I think you need to do it. You need to roll it out slowly. But yeah. that gives more opportunity for you to be caught. Yeah, that's also true. But it has to be done very stealthily, like a spy. Like a spy, one by one, one at a time, and go the from like, ants the go marching one by one. Hurrah! Hurrah! Hurrah. Hurrah. Yeah, no, I like low key, like agree, like that what you did, what you had to do at the time, like for yourself and for your man. But now you can acknowledge it. It was crazy. And that's called growth. And I'm no, really proud of you. Who's to say that like you reached this place, not like perhaps you reached this place of confidence and, and, and certainty and security because of what you did. No, for sure. I said, you, like, know, like, you, you did what you had crazy to do. You allowed you to get to this place. You to did thrive you in had an to environment do. uninterrupted by bikini models. You did what you had to do for you and your man and your relationship. And I'm proud of you. And now you're, you know, grown enough to, to make some changes again. Slowly. Slowly. Do Slow not tell him. Slow roll out. Overall messages, do not tell him. Like, you will look so crazy. Oh, no. That's not And I don't know. What you do in your own time is nobody's business but your own. Don't sweat it. I think we could learn a lot from you. I agree. Hey, girlies and Streisand brothers. My bestie at work has this little... Jackie, you're going to like like actually vomit, okay? Oh, God. My bestie at work has this little baking side hustle, and she's very good. Every Christmas, her and her mom spend a weekend before Thanksgiving baking hundreds of Christmas cookies of all kinds to give out as gifts to their friends and families over the holidays. This year was my first year getting a full-size box for my family. Other people at the office who got boxes included her entire team of like 10 plus people, a few of our bosses, a couple of peers. The day she gave it to me, I was headed to my parents for the night for a birthday dinner. My family knows her baking so well, and they were just so excited about the cookies. The next morning, I sprang up out of bed so excited to dine on the cookies, when to my surprise, as I entered the kitchen, the box was gone. I come to find out that two cockroaches had crawled out of the box earlier that morning when my parents were having cookies with their coffee, and they of course had to throw out the entire box, basically fumigate the kitchen. I'm positive that it did not come from my parents because my mom hired an exterminator later that day and they confirmed that there were no bugs in the house. I am horrified because she gave this box to a ton of other people at work, including executives in our group. I'm definitely the closest person to her who got a box, but I'm so torn. Do I just take it to the grave with me or do I find a way to tell the friend that her box was a cockroach motel? Sincerely, a toaster who can never look at Christmas cookies the same way. That's horrible. Just tell her. Like, I don't know, because like, it still could have been you like that no but it just sounds like she exhausted every option like i'm operating under the premise that it was not you and like you should just tell her because like she made you she made you go through this 
And so also she knows, like, don't ever give me one of your roach-laced cookies again. I do want to say, when like, I are done, I won't tell everyone else because I don't want to start a panic, but you have unleashed roach vermin. mania. Roach mania in the office. Now, I'm it's not going to tell anyone because... It's Rochella. <laughs> it's Rochella. Actually, maybe tell, honestly, like, to me, this is so unforgivable. Like, get your disgusting fucking cookies that I never asked for away from me. It's so, like, extra to, like, make backs of cookies for everyone. Even though, like, nobody asked. Nobody Shut wants off. your homemade cookies. No, but, like, no, the girl if said, I don't, Jackie, like, If no. I don't know you, like, if you're not, if to me, it's like, if you're not Olivia or you're not, like, my close friend and you're, like, bringing me some homemade goods, like, I'm good. Bitch, but you also, couldn't be more but wrong. But also, then it's a roach infested. Like, you need to be stopped dead in your tracks. So this is what you do. This is the plan. You tell the biggest yenta at the office. Yeah. The biggest gossip that there were. But, you, but bitch, you better be 100% certain they came from her box. Yeah. Like, I almost want you to send your, like, to do. Because you can't start this rumor about someone and it's, like, not true. You need to find a way to confirm that it was in another box. Like, you need to have proof because we're not going to be slandering homemade chefs. And you tell the biggest gossip in your office that you got your box and there was two roaches in it. And then you let the chips fall where they may. Okay, I just want to say you had a few things wrong. One, the girl said, like, this, these girls' cookies are really good. It's like a treat to get one. She's not imposing her box of cookies on people. Like, she's very talented. Two, um, I actually couldn't agree with you less. Like, I think the best baked goods in the world come from people who are like full-time workers who happen to be really good at baking. Uh, Casey Pie. Yeah, but like I, I don't think that's Casey the Pie. Casey it's Pie the best is, pie I've never had. no, she's, she ha, has a business. She works in finance. So and then she's like really good at making pies. So like a little side hustle, she'll like sell a couple pies during the holidays. Some of the best baked goods are from people who have side hustles. Yes, correct. Yes. yes. That's not that's what, what she's doing. She didn't sell these cookies. Well, this year it was like a gift, but I do think she, she said side hustle. It literally says side hustle. So it's like a side business. And then for her gifts for her, you know, coworkers, she, you know, in lieu of a bottle of wine, made cookies. Okay. Run. okay, okay, okay. I'm with you. I'm following. Continue. So I just want to say it wasn't an imposition, but the cockroaches <laughs> does change things. It is now an imposition. I don't know what to tell you. Like to bring a cockroach into someone's home is an unforgivable thing unforgivable because it's a problem for life they like no, when it's eggs. like if you have if your cockroach problem is to the point that you can't take a box out of your kitchen without right. you sneaking in then i'm sorry they are crawling all over the place and you have to know about it and you're knowingly making baked goods in your cockroach hotel for your friends and family <laughs> because you're right for them to have gotten in the box it must oh my god i can't talk about this my back is starting to tingle it must i'm be the wrong so person but here's the thing i'm the wrong person to ask about this because i take such offense like if this were the if this happened to me i would lose my mind and so i'm out of my mind i can't answer you what to do for me this is reason enough to like go no contact with this person forever like it's really but what it's would, would you tell anyone would you tell her what would you do i think i feel like telling her you made the best point like if they get into the box like they're not okay like they're she must know about the roach problem like if, they, if it's that rampant so you're telling her something she already knows and chose to ignore yeah and chose and to, fucking, to use as a kitchen that's diabolical stuff unless i don't know she took it on the train i don't know you know what was the journey of the box no for real um i getting a tingle down my spine i cannot talk about riches i'm staring at the floor right now because now i'm anticipating an attack so i'm man enough to say that like my advice here is maybe not the best advice because like I would take this so deeply personal like to me this is this is a trigger for me yeah. a roach a roach hotel in my like that is a trigger for me so maybe someone in the comments can tell us what's best here because I can't see clearly out of this one we're too triggered <laughs> we're too triggered well that was dear toasters thank you to everyone who wrote in again that email is dear toasters at gmail.com try and keep your submission brief simply need to know information for the best chance of getting on the show 
that is our show. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. Find us, The Toast, and leave a five-star review about how wickedly talented we are. Have an amazing hump day. We'll see you tomorrow for our final episode of the week because tomorrow night I am in Delaware for one of the final shows of the NLog tour. So four episodes this week, not five. And we're back on Monday. Oh, and are you going to be in New York on Monday? Yeah. Girlies back together. OG recipe. A A. Love you guys. Have an amazing day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.